All right, uh, last uh, video here, uh, um, and luckily ScreenFlow, after I recorded a, about a half hour, um, crashed. Woohoo! Uh, so this will be a really short video. Um, so the final part of this project is I've got these um, these three video loops here: a three minute, a five minute, a ten minute, and I've gone into uh, the PR Reach template. And if I do a show package contents and look at the media bin here, we've got the PR reach, the intro, the outro, and the three minute loop, which is only 7.3 megabyte. And remember the four second loop was, um, what was it, 442 uh, megabyte? Crazy. Uh, and since the, the whole uh, video crashed that I did all the work, uh, here's the, um, whoops. Stop it. Oh, let's uh, change this to have a dot text on the end so OSX knows how to open it. So here is the um, the command that I use to actually create the loop and I'll just run through it really quickly. Um, like this a little bigger so you can see it. Um, so I ran FFmpeg and I gave it the, the loop option that says to loop and the input is going to loop 30 frames a second using remember our temporary um, directory that had all our files and I actually tried uh, both the smush directory and the normal directory and there was uh, such a small amount of difference in the size of the files that it just wasn't even worth going through that two and a half hours to smudge stuff. Um, there's a size here now the the size of these ping images is already um, uh, 1080p which is 1920 by 1080 but I put the size here so if you'd like to change for example uh, a piece of footage to be um, you know say you've got a um, something like a 4k video uh, clip or a uh, 1080p that you'd like to change to 720p for example if you'd like to go to 720p then you'd put uh, uh, 1080 by 720 here. Thread zero says to allocate as many threads as possible from the machine to do the transcode um, for this particular transcode sequence of going from um, ping images to uh, H.264 um, looks like it only uses two threads but if I'm for example was going from uh, H.264 to H.264 since I've got an eight uh, well I've got a quad core hyper threaded machine so that's the equivalent of eight threads so that makes a huge difference so rule of thumb is for FFmpeg always use dash thread zero and that will do the fastest encode possible on your machine uh, preset medium says to use a collection of FFMP, uh, FFmpeg um, command line arguments that are extremely esoteric and hard to, well, they'd be really long to explain and I wouldn't even really know if I was explaining them right. What medium does is um, it's a good trade-off between the time it takes to do the transcode and the uh, size of the output file. Uh, Profile high uh, makes the quality a little bit higher. If you're transcoding a video for something like an iOS or Android phone, you'd have to use um, profile baseline here because the uh, the those devices only support baseline instead of high or um, main. So the be so the profiles are basically um, uh, are creating different levels of compression in the H.264 uh, video stream. So uh, the high is a, is a, um, going to be probably a little bit higher quality and a little bit harder, take a little bit more CPU to decode it on the fly. So it's, um, that's why the um, phone devices, for example, don't support that. Uh, CRF23, this is the big uh, workhorse of this the whole command. If you make this number lower, like if I made this a CRF um, uh, 10, it makes the file, uh, a 10 second file came out to be 279 megabyte. And uh, for a, um, uh, 
I think the same file was like uh, 100 kilobyte for CRF23. So CRF2 is basically a lossless transcode, and this is a lossy. In other words, you're losing some slight uh, uh, visual um, quality, and especially since um, if we look at our video footage here, so here's our footage. So our footage already to begin with is um, it's meant to be blurry and way far in the background um, with a person set over the front of it so it's not really an issue. Um, for every specific type of transcode um, you may have to mess around with this. PIX format UV420P just basically um, is a, um, a part of the directive to a Live 264 that um, plays on pretty much every device available. The T180, that's 180 seconds, so that's three minutes. And our output video, we're going to keep at 30 frames per second. If we change this to like 15 frames per second, it would, uh, and our input was 30 and our output was 15, it would drop a frame every, um, in other words, going from 30 frames to 15 is exactly half, so it would drop every other frame. So we're keeping the frame rate incoming and outgoing the same to maximize quality. And then um, here's the name of the file here is PRReach Virtual Set 3 Minute Loop. So that's the command. Boom! Um, and then I just went into the template here and I um, deleted the old um, uh, 4 second loop and put in the 3 minute loop. And now what I'm going to do is just uh, zip up the this uh, directory here, PR Reach Assets, and put it on the server and uh, tell Rob where to download it. And we're done with this video.